vibrant, vibrant, vibrant music teaching. Proven and practical tips, strategies, and ideas for music teachers. Welcome to episode 63 of the Vibrant Music Teaching Podcast. I'm Nicola Canton, and today we're talking about creativizing your teaching. Welcome, beautiful teachers. And yes, you heard me correctly in the intro. I said creativizing. That's not a word. I realize it's not a word. You may have heard, though, of another made up word called gamify. And that's something I've talked about in the past. And many other teacher blogs and podcasts and all that sort of thing talk about gamification and making our education into either a game or using gamified leveling systems in order to enhance our teaching. But what I want to talk to you about today is creativizing. And if you haven't heard the term, that's because I made it up. But I think you can guess what I mean by it in a loose sense. And I want to go into what specifically this means to me, because for me, this is, although many people know me for games and that kind of thing, creativization is really more broadly what I think of myself as doing to education and to the concepts that we need to teach. So first of all, let's look at the old form of teaching or the traditional form or whatever we want to call it, the classical method, where we have different chunks of the lesson. And we have a few minutes that are spent on scales. And then we spend this chunk of time on a particular piece. And then we spend this chunk of time on theory work. And then the lesson is over. Right, So there are these different segmented parts. And you may have read about a different way of thinking about this through the work of Paul Harris, some of my favorite books written by Paul Harris. He wrote a book called Simultaneous Learning, and he's also talked about the simultaneous learning approach in other books of his that I've read, Improve Your Teaching and all these kind of things. He tends to come back to this idea of simultaneous learning. And what I'm doing with creativization is in a way similar to that. A little bit of a different approach, but I think we have a similar goal. And that's to stop thinking about these different segments of the lesson and trying to squeeze one more thing in and start thinking about everything as being related because it is. It's all music. And if we think about it as the scale chunk and then the piece chunk and then the technique chunk, that's not really accurate and it's not very helpful for our students who are trying to learn music. And it also makes it very hard to fit in creative activities because, again, we see them as a separate chunk that we have to fit into our lessons. And at some stage, probably sooner rather than later, we just run out of time for all the stuff. There's not room for an improvisation section when we have the others and we only have 30 minutes or 45 minutes. We can't fit another thing in. And that's where I've come up with this idea or come to believe in this idea of creativizing everything, of making everything creative. Because if you don't think about fitting improvisation or composing or something like that into your lessons in any specific way where you have a different segment for those tasks, then you can start to think about everything as having the potential to be a creative activity because absolutely everything does. And the creativity can actually help to bridge the gap between all the different activities that you need to do and concepts that you need to teach. It can help to glue everything back together and make everything flow more fluidly throughout the lesson. So let me give you a few examples of how you might creativize different aspects of the lesson. First of all, let's take scales, right? Because they're a standard thing that most teachers do in most lessons, and we all know them as something that students and perhaps teachers find a bit dull. But scales don't have to be just scales. They don't have to be just done up and down. And I've talked about this previously on the podcast where I explained my Circle of Fifths Odyssey approach. This is what this is really about. It's about creativizing scales and chords and key signatures so that they become an activity that's based around improvisation where you're still learning about the scales and using them and practicing them, but you're doing it in a way that is creative, that includes improvisation. So you can improvise together using scales, 
You can do it as a duet together where you have an accompaniment part. You can give your students a backing track that they can use. And all of these things are things I talked about in my Circle of Fifths Odyssey course inside Vibrant Music Teaching and also in the podcast. So I'll share a link to that in the show notes for this episode, which will be at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash 6363. Okay, so scales are one thing. Theory is another thing that can easily be creativized. And the easiest way to creativize your theory work is to do composing. Whenever you need your student to learn about a particular theory concept, get them to compose in a way that's going to make them come across that particular thing, right? So if you want them to learn how to draw a sharp sign, then you get them to compose something using a chromatic sound and you show them how to make chromatic sounds with a black key onto a white key. And therefore, they're absolutely, no matter what key they're going to be in, going to come across some accidentals. Or if you want them to learn about a particular key signature, you get them to compose something in that key. And you can even improvise together first and then have them compose something and notate it. It doesn't have to be a huge project either. It can be just a few minutes where you write a simple two or four bar phrase together. Maybe you add a left hand, maybe you don't. But they've had to notate it. They've done the same work they would have done in a theory workbook, except that it's relevant to them. It's interesting and it's creative. Or how about you're working on a new piece? How could you creativize that? Well, when we start a new piece, we're normally going to have to focus on various different aspects of it. And depending on the piece, that will be different things. So you're going to take the most difficult thing normally first and have your student practice that or the newest thing to them anyway. So let's say your piece has a lovely little bass line going on. And maybe it's written quite low down on the staff and your student hasn't really practiced a lot with notes down there. Or maybe it has a particular shape that they're not used to playing in on the piano. Okay, so you get them to practice that while you improvise on top of their bass line and you're creating music together. Or maybe you get them to improvise with their right hand playing just long whole notes or semi reeves if it's a lot going on in the left hand. Keep it simple but give them some parameters where they can experiment with it. And you can even take the notes that are going to be in the right hand, so the position their hand is going to be in, or the main notes that come up again and again, and have them improvise with those notes. Right? So they haven't even met the piece formally yet, but they're practicing this element and getting creative with it before they get there. They're going to be that much more successful with the piece on the first go, and they'll have gotten a creative activity into the mix as well. Or let's say you have an old piece, a piece that they've been working on for a little while. Maybe it's become a little stale or been forgotten about and it needs to be repolished up, ready for a recital or something like that. Well, yeah, you can have them play it as is and I'm sure they'll have to do that. But you can also reinvent it a little bit. So come up with a style together that you could transform the piece into, perhaps a style they've encountered in another piece. Let me give you an example. Let's say they're learning a minuet, Bach minuet or something. Okay, so they have their minuet and that's their old piece, but they've been working on a newer piece that has swing in it. So what would it feel like if you added the swing into the minuet? Yes, they may not be going to play it that way in the competition or in the recital, although they could, but they, by practicing it in a new way, getting creative with it, coming up with their own spin on it, they'll actually learn more about it than if they just played something robotically like they've played a thousand times before. Or one last example, let's say your student is learning about form. If they're learning about, you know, something simple, A, B, A, and you're going to encounter that in a piece. Okay, you want them to identify those different parts. That's great. But how about you get them to try it in the reverse? Make the A the B and the B the A. So it essentially goes B, A, B, although we would rename those, right? But make it go Bab, B, A, B, and see what that sounds like. Do they prefer it? Is there a reason the composer chose to have the B as the B rather than to swap them around? Or what if you extended it and made it A, B, B, A, or A, B, A, B? Which sounds the best? 
how would you need to add a new ending if you had it in the with the b at the end would you need to come up with a slightly different ending so that it sounds like it's finished right so those are just a few examples of how you can creativize anything in your lesson because you really can once you start thinking like this and taking little steps little baby steps towards this you'll be surprised how many things you can make more interesting and more creative in your lessons and how much richer the experience is for your students. Because when they get creative with things, and this has been proven time and again in various learning education studies in all different subjects, when you get creative with something, you have better recall of the concepts involved, but you are also more able to apply those concepts in a new context. So rather than being fixed to this is a sharp sign and it means F sharp, they can then apply that and see it in a different way, entirely different context and use it to come up with new conclusions, right? So no matter what the thing is that they've come across, they'll have more flexible understanding of it if they've gotten creative with it. It also leads them to understand that music is not just written by dead white men. Because if we follow the traditional model, that is the danger. And if your student is not a white man, and well, they're definitely not dead, so they are not going to be able to identify with the people that have written their pieces always. And they should be able to see that music is alive. It's living. New people write music all the time. People of any race any gender can write music and they can do it too. And by finding their own voice within music, finding their own way of writing or improvising, they're learning that music is for them to create as well. And they'll get to appreciate more the work that was composed by others. And they'll identify them more themselves as a musician and giving them a musical identity Having that be a core part of who they believe they are means your students are much more likely to stick around for the long term. Okay, so that's just a taste of creativization. I hope you can see what a difference this can make. I am running a free challenge starting next week to celebrate Vibrant Music Teaching's second birthday. Can't believe it's already our second birthday. So it's the site's second birthday. Non-members and members alike are welcome to come along to this challenge. It's going to be so much fun. And we're going to be talking about a different way to creativize your lesson every day for five days. So you can sign up for this at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash birthday. So just one word, birthday, vibrantmusicteaching.com slash birthday. It's completely free. And not only are you going to learn how to creativize different aspects of your lessons and receive some awesome free training, you'll also be in with a shout to win one of the prizes each and every day because on Vibrant Music Teaching's birthday, I don't get presents from you guys, I send you presents instead. So you're going to want to tune in for these live workshops. Sign up at vibrantmusicteaching.com slash birthday and I'll see you there. Just a quick reminder before I let you go that the price for Vibrant Music Teaching membership is going to be going up in a few weeks. So you're going to want to sign up before that happens because once you sign up for membership, your price is locked in for as long as you're a member. It's $19.95 US dollars per month right now if you go to vmt.ninja and sign up today. 